Joanna. Hi, Kurt. Where's Dick? He's down in the basement with George. They're looking at the furnace. Mm -hmm. Let me guess where you're going. Give up. <laughs> I'm taking Leslie to the Dartmouth-Harvard football game. It's the biggest game of the season. Everyone goes. They have picnics in the parking lots, bands play, people make floats. It's great. It's probably the major social event of the entire year. That sounds wonderful. It is. Leslie and I are really looking forward to it. Oh. Hey, Leslie, want to go to the game? No, thanks. I have to study. Want to buy a blanket? Well, I think the best thing to do is just buy a new furnace. I mean, we, uh, we need a bigger one anyway, don't we? A bigger one won't fit in that corner. Well, then put it in the southeast corner. That's where the stairs are. Well, then put it in the southwest corner. Then you'll put it on top of Mrs. Newton. <laughs> Who? Mrs. Newton, the lady who's buried in the basement. There, there's a lady buried in our basement? You didn't know that? No. Oh, well, sit down. This may come as quite a shock. Uh, Joanna, did, did, did you hear this? What? What would you say if I told you there was a, a body buried in our basement? I'd say it. What would you say if you weren't a college graduate? What are you talking about? He's talking about Sarah Newton, the lady who's buried in your basement. Are you serious? You want to see? I'd like to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Ick. Close the door. George, how come you, you never told us about this before? Everyone in town knows the Stratford Inn has a body in the basement. How long has she been down there? It must be close to 300 years. Everyone in town knows that. Why is she down there? That no one knows. I can't understand why nobody told us about this when we bought the place. Well, maybe they did and you just forgot. I don't think so. I'm not sure that I can live up here with her down there. Honey, I, I think maybe you're just, you know, overreacting. I think in time you'll get used to her being down there. I mean, I'm down there all the time, and sometimes I, I don't even know I'm walking on her. Isn't there somebody we can call about this? Who? Well, I don't know, but I don't like the idea of a body being under our bedroom. Uh, actually, it's not under your bedroom. It's buried in the southwest corner, which would put it under, uh... My study. <laughs> All right, let, let's not lose our heads about this. Uh, there is one person I can call. Oh. <clears throat> uh, uh, Mom? <laughs> Dick? I picked up a couple of brochures on some furnaces. I thought you might want to take a look at them. What, what's the difference? Well, this one's in color. <laughs> no, I meant in the furnaces. Oh, well, uh, this one here is made in Europe, all foreign parts. If it ever breaks down, it could take weeks, maybe months to fix. And wh what about this one? That one's perfect. And then why don't we get this? It's ten dollars more. Let's let's get it anyway. First class. I like that. <laughs> Joanna, great news. Dick and I solved the problem in the basement. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, we decided to put in a new furnace. Top of the line. What about Mrs. Newton? Oh, shoot. Just when everything looked like it was going great. Did you find out anything about Mrs. Newton? Uh, yeah, I talked to the chief uh, medical examiner. And? Well, apparently there's a, there's a rule in the county that you can't take anything out of the county that was in the county before the county was a county. <laughs> uh, 
How'd you do? Well, I started off at the town hall. Everybody there knew about Mrs. Newton, but nobody knew what to do about moving her. They suggested that I try to find out if she still had any relatives in the area. So I went to the Hall of Records, and they sent me to the Historical Society, who recommended that I try the genealogy section of the library. You, you did all that in one morning? <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised all you did was make a phone call. <laughs> well, I, I, did, I didn't just make a phone call. Oh. <laughs> what else did you do? I ate an orange. <laughs> well, while you were eating, I found out that her husband, Jacob Newton, was one of the original settlers and founding fathers of the town. I also found out that the Newton house was on the same site as our house, which means that our basement was their basement. Yeah, but that, that still doesn't explain why Sarah's uh, buried down there. Yeah, I know, that's the curious thing. The records don't even mention her except to say that her husband is buried in the churchyard, but it doesn't explain why she isn't buried with him. Well, uh, husbands and, and wives aren't, aren't always buried together. I have, a, I have an aunt who's buried in uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, my uncle is buried on the beach in Normandy. He was killed in the war? No, my aunt found him there with another woman. <laughs> How long have you been saving that one? Uh, 16 years. <laughs> now, honey, listen. I was wondering if there was some way that we could get Mr. and Mrs. Newton next to each other. You're not suggesting that we put Mr. Newton in our basement. Come on, Dick. I'm suggesting that we go over to the church where Mr. Newton is buried and talk to the minister about getting Mrs. Newton moved there. Good idea. I'd like to get out of the house anyway and uh, walk off that orange. <laughs> come in, come in, please. Sit down. Sit down. It's always a pleasure to... Welcome new people to our little church. Well, we, uh, we aren't here to, to join your church. Oh. <laughs> but we'd be more than happy to make a donation, wouldn't we, Dick? Hmm? <laughs> oh, uh, sure, sure. Uh, well, unfortunately, I, I only have a 20. <laughs> but I'm... Sure will be put to good use. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Now, how may I help you? Well, uh, the reason we're here, and I, I know this is going to sound incredible, um, we found out that a, a woman is, is buried in our basement. You must be from the Stratford Inn. <laughs> right, the incredible Stratford Inn. You're referring to Sarah Newton. Yes, but what you may not know, Reverend, is that her husband, Jacob Newton, is buried in your churchyard. Really? <laughs> yes, Reverend. We were wondering if there was any way of getting Sarah Newton moved over here. I don't understand why she wasn't buried here to begin with. You know, that is curious. Maybe there's something about it in the old church record. Do you, do you know approximately when she died? We know exactly when she died. The, uh, the 1600s. <laughs> The, uh, late 1600. <laughs> oh, but, uh, let's see. Late, late 1600s. Here we are. Nesbitt, Nettles, Newton. Jacob Newton, born 1656. What, what does it say? Oh, the usual thing about being pious and God-fearing. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yes, Sarah, Sarah Newton, born 1660, died 1692. Uh-oh. What's the matter? She was refused church burial. Refused? Does it give a reason? Yes, very good one. She was a witch. Ick. <laughs> She was refused a proper burial because someone accused her of being a witch? Oh, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Well, maybe now, but in the 1600s, it was a real sticking point. Well, what did they do? Burn her at the stake? Oh, come now, Mrs. Loudon. They never burned witches at the stake in this country. This is America. What, what did they do? They hung her. <laughs> of course, afterwards, the mob did wander over and burn down her house. Well, I suppose after a hanging, it's kind of hard to just go home and kick off your shoes. You know? Well, at least now, 
Now we know why she's buried where she is. That poor thing. What could she have done to make people think she was a witch? Well, let me see if it's here. She was seen burying a cat at midnight. She made a lady's hair fall out. And she was accused of turning someone's son into a badger. <laughs> and that's it? Well, honey, if she really turned a kid into a badger... <laughs> is preposterous. Oh, Reverend, surely you can see how unfair all these charges well, were. Well, of course, but unfortunately she is still listed by the church as a witch. Well, isn't there anything you can do to get Mrs. Newton's name taken off the, the witch list? <laughs> well, one way is to go to the church's executive council and have the name stricken from the record. Then you will have to file a brief showing cause why the church was erroneous in its original views and have the church hierarchy render a unanimous decision to reverse the former decision against her. Oh. Or another way would be to just cross her off the list. <laughs> you can do that? You got a pencil? <laughs> you mean that's it? That's it. And now you'll let Mrs. Newton into your cemetery? We'll be happy to. Oh, this is very kind of you, Reverend. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Reverend, it's a credit to you that uh, you took a stand in clearing Mrs. Newton's name. Please, these aren't the dark ages. This is the 20th century. We consider ourselves enlightened. Good day. Oh, well, by the way, you aren't going to do this after dark, are you? <laughs> no, why? Bad luck to move a witch at night. Uh, Mr. Garver, we, uh, we appreciate your calling to, to confirm your, your reservation. I, I have it right here in front of me. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you this afternoon. Oh, oh there, is, there is one thing I, um, I, I should mention. Yeah, uh, well, there's a, a possibility... Um, we, we may be having uh, some work done in our basement, but uh, it, it really shouldn't inconvenience you in, in any way. It, it's really nothing. <laughs> well, um, see, there's, there's this body in our, in our basement, and uh, we're, uh, we're having her excavated. Well, there's the, uh, the Hanover Inn. Uh, the Inn at White Falls. I, I understand completely. Th th thank you for thinking of us. Well, I ordered your furnace. Oh, good, George. The installation will cost $80. I, I thought you'd take care of that. I don't have $80. <laughs> I thought you'd install it. Oh, oh, well, I, I guess I could do that. Do, do you know anything about furnaces? Well, I, I know they go in the basement. <laughs> they give off heat. And if you want one installed right, it costs $80. <laughs> Why don't we spend the $80 and have it done right? <laughs> I think we'll all sleep better. Great news, Joanna. Dick and I solved the problem in the basement, and it's only going to cost $80. To move Mrs. Newton? <laughs> you know, I don't think I'm going to tell you good news anymore. I thought he meant the people from the mortuary were here. No, they should be here any minute. Oh, I'm going to be so relieved when this is all over. You know, the more I learn about Sarah, the more attached I feel to her. You've really been reading up on this. Well, I can't sleep at night. I have to do something. Did I tell you that she had seven children? Two of them almost died of consumption, and she nursed them back to health. <laughs> on top of that, she taught them all to read and write. She made all their clothes. She grew all their food. <laughs> then they accuse her of practicing witchcraft? It's ridiculous. I agree. When, when would she have found the time? <laughs> hey, Leslie. Thanks a lot for doing that. For showing you Mrs. Newton? No, for going down alone in the basement with me. <laughs> Great grave, Dick. Thanks, Kirk. That means a lot coming from you. So, who did you find to replant her? Kirk, please, we're trying to handle this with as much dignity as possible. I think the kid from the mortuary's here. The kid? 
Come on, Leslie. I don't think the Gardendale mortuary is going to send over a kid. <laughs> my, my mistake. I'm from the mortuary. Uh, oh, right. Uh, I, I don't know why. Uh, uh, somehow I thought you'd be a little older. They have a really bright junior achievement program here, Dick. <laughs> Oh, my dad says I have to work from after school if I want wheels. What, what a bummer. <laughs> Where'll I get my van? I'm going to Europe. That should be some drive. <laughs> so, where's the loved one? Uh, she's... in the basement. What do you got, like a rec room down there? No, it's just a basement. She, she's buried down there. She's been buried down there for 300 years. I, I thought everyone knew that. Uh, hey, I don't know what happened last Tuesday. <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't matter. The point is, we, we want her moved. Uh, and what do you want me to do? The digging. What, do you like the Adams family? <laughs> Average people trying to get a body moved out of our basement. Not by me. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, yo. We, we got a deal. Deal this. I saw that. <laughs> I'm gonna tell your father you can kiss your van goodbye. Can you believe that? What a rotten kid. You know, somebody like that shouldn't be working for a mortuary. Somebody like that should be a badger. <laughs> Do. Listen, if you're really up against it, I know some guys who'll do anything for a buck. In fact, I think I have their, uh, their card right here. You'll do anything for a buck. <laughs> They're not kidding either. I had them cut down dead trees, hallway trash, recommend restaurants. <laughs> Sounds too good to be true. What, do you really think we should call them? I think we're out of alternatives. Yep. Hello. Is this uh, anything for a buck? Yeah, my, my, my name is Dick Loudon. I'm the owner of the Stratford Inn. Yeah, there, there's something we have to have moved. Not until next week. There's, there's no way you could, you could do it sooner. Well, it's, um, it's a 300-year-old corpse that's, that's buried in our basement. F five minutes would be fine. No, uh, actually, we thought we'd pay you. We, we can't wait either. my brother Daryl, that's my other brother Daryl. So, uh, how you doing? Oh, okay, except I throwed my back out last week crawling under a house. Sounds like a tough job. Wasn't a job, I just like crawling under houses. <laughs> Where's the little lady? Mrs. Newton is down those stairs. Thank you. Uh, if, if you don't mind my asking, um, how, how do you go about this, this sort of thing? Well, we usually just wait till we get down there to see what's the most fun. <laughs> well, you seem real eager to get started. Um, honey, do you have any questions for the, the guys? You have any questions? Dig her up, right? Right. No questions. <laughs> We're 
We're doing the right thing, aren't we? Honey, we talked this over. You wanted her next to her husband. You're right. You're right. So if it's right, why do I feel so awful? Honey, a lot of times when you, you do the right thing, it, it makes your flesh crawl. <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's just that things have changed since we started this. I mean, now we're talking about a real person. A woman that I have come to know and care about. I mean, Sarah was a wife and a mother, and she suffered a lot of indignity, what with being hung and all, and... <laughs> I think maybe we should reconsider. You mean, you mean leave her down there? But I, I thought you said her, her place was next to her husband. Well, her husband was a jerk. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Okay, where was he when Sarah was being tried as a witch? Did he speak up for her? Well, maybe he couldn't speak up for her. Why not? Who knows what she turned him into? <laughs> It's not funny, Dick. Well, I, I thought you said you couldn't sleep at night no, knowing that she was down there. Well, now I'm not sure I could sleep nights knowing we moved her. I guess I'm starting to feel protective. Nobody else ever looked out for her. You're, um, you're serious about this? Yes, I am. You understand, don't you, honey? Oh, of course. I just... I don't know how to break the news to Larry, Daryl, and Daryl. <laughs> Uh, uh, guys, you want, uh, you want to come up here a second? <laughs> yeah? So how, how, uh, how far have you gone? We're still flipping for the first digs. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, know quite how to tell you this, but, uh, my, my wife and I, we've, uh, We've changed our, our minds about moving, uh, uh, moving Mrs. Newton. This comes as quite a shock. <laughs> but, you know, of course, we'll be, we'll be glad to, to pay you for, for your time. And, and if there's uh, anything like this ever, you know, comes up again, you'll certainly be the first ones we'll, we'll call. <clears throat> I wish, you know, I wish there was some way of I'm making this up to you. Well, uh, Dick, there was that dead possum out by the well. We'll take it. <laughs> Daryl! Daryl! <laughs> Dick, the men are here to put in the new furnace. a new hotel. I love games. I have a philosophy. It's not whether you win or lose. It's just important to have as much fun as you can. Yeah, my philosophy is win or die. So... 
Give me Marvin Gardens. Would you mind watching the desk for a minute? Where's Dick and Joanna? In Dick's study being interviewed for the Sunday magazine. Why? Because Sunday magazine interviews interesting people in town, and they think that Dick and Joanna are interesting people. They never interviewed me. Maybe they don't think you're interesting. Well, then I hate them. <laughs> well, I'm going to serve them some coffee. Would you mind taking care of the desk in case anybody comes in? Sure. All right. Uh, excuse me, could someone help us? Yeah, she'll be back in a second. I would have to say I don't think uh, either of us have ever been happier. I agree with Dick. The move to Vermont was the best thing we ever did. Oh, and you should know uh, Leslie Vanderkillen. This is Mrs. Vosford from the Weekly Horn. Hello. Hello. Uh, what do you do, Leslie? Well, I work part-time for the Loudons as a maid, and I'm also studying at Dartmouth for my master's degree in Renaissance theology. In her spare time, she's training to become a member of the United States Olympic ski team. And if that isn't enough, she makes a heck of a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's impressive. Thank you. Let me know if you need anything. Nice meeting you. Thank you, Leslie. All that, and she's pretty, too. Yes, Leslie's amazing. No, Leslie's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> let's get back to you two. What do you like most about each other? Mrs. Loudon? Oh, I don't know where to begin. Dick is so wonderful. He's kind and generous, fair, dedicated. He's handsome, <laughs> creative and industrious and... Well, just about the best all-round guy in the world. <laughs> you just did better than Leslie. <laughs> what do you like best about your wife? Oh, that's easy. I, I would say that uh, Joanna is a terrific homebody. <laughs> I left out that he has a great sense of humor. <laughs> Why, did, did I say something funny? You said I was a homebody. No, I said you were a terrific homebody. Darling, that sounds like I'm somebody who's always home. Oh, well, you are. Well, I may be home, but I'm always busy. Well, then I guess I should have called you a busybody. <laughs> Dick! No, really, I, I love it that you're satisfied, uh, you know, being around the house with, with no responsibilities. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I, I didn't mean no responsibilities, but... I mean, all your responsibilities are, are here at the inn and not out in the real world. Sweetheart, I don't think that's right either. Well, Joanna, what do you want me to say? Well, I'd like you to make it clear to Mrs. Vosper that I don't sit around all day and knit. Oh, oh, I see. I see. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think I can explain. Um, well, in, in the first place, uh, Joanna doesn't know how to knit. <laughs> You don't, you don't really sew either, do you? No, and thank you so much for clearing that up. <laughs> Mrs. Loudon, why don't you tell me what you do? No, really, I'm much more interested in what Dick has to say. She's, a, she's teasing now. Oh, that, that's another quality I, I love about Joanna. She's a, she's a great teaser. <laughs> I'm not teasing. She's teasing now. Dick, quit stalling. Tell Mrs. Vosper what you think I do. No, I, I don't know exactly what you do. I mean, how could I? I'm always working. <laughs> and I'm not? Mrs. Loudon, for what it's worth, I'm on your side. I used to be home. I know what it's like. I admire any woman who chooses to stay there. The task is awesome. Thank you, Mrs. Vosper. In fact, I think you deserve an award. <laughs> Personally, it drove me up the wall. <laughs> the tedium, the endless days. I mean, how many soap operas can a person watch? I don't watch soap operas. Oh, I know. I didn't admit watching them either. <laughs> and the point is, I recognize your value. It takes a special kind of, what? Metabolism to do what you do. You mean a slower metabolism? Joanna. Like, say, a snake? Honey, nobody said anything about snakes. No, I think that's accurate, Dick. You know how slow my metabolism is. I only eat twice a year. Every March, I swallow a roast, and then I'm good until fall. I'm sorry, have I touched a nerve? No, not at all. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll go out and lie on a ruck. You gotta watch her, she'll tease your pants off. <laughs> making faces in my plate. That's what I thought. Why do you ask? No reason. So, how did that interview you had go today? Uh, it went fine. Uh, John, I, I hate to ask you this, but uh, do, do we have any gravy? Do I sense a little tension in the air? Everything is fine, Joy. Oh, good. You have your choice of gravies, dear. Beef, turkey, or giblet. <laughs> Would you like some gravy, George? No. <laughs> you know, uh, Joanna, you, you can't stay mad at me forever. You're probably right, but let's wait and see. <laughs> what, what was so terrible about what I said? What was so terrible about what you said? What did you say? Nothing, George. Dick called me a homebody. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> no, it isn't. Then why aren't we having gravy? He said he doesn't know what I do all day. Well, I, I know you, you do things. Things? Let me tell you what I do. I run this inn for one thing. I make breakfast every morning for at least a dozen people. I check guests in and out. With Leslie's help, I dust, I clean, I iron. I also do the bookkeeping. I polish, I restore, I refinish. And those are the kind of things I meant by things. <laughs> you know, I think I just realized why we bought this inn. We bought it so I could kill myself working and you could walk through it every day and say, I love this inn. I'd love some more meat. <laughs> what I was trying to say today is I, I don't notice what you do because uh, people who are great at what they do always make it look so easy. I don't know. Maybe I'm just mad because I'm sensitive about it. I've always had other interests, at least till we moved here. Maybe deep down, I don't think what I'm doing is important enough. Well, what, what do you want to do? Maybe I could go back to school. I think that's a terrific idea. I'm too old. That's true. I am not. <laughs> it's always been one of the regrets of my life that I never got my degree. I came so close. What happened? I met Dick. Oh. <laughs> We were both working at the same ad agency in New York. He was a copywriter, and I was going to NYU and working part-time as a secretary. And when we got married, Dick quit his job to write, and I quit school so I could work full-time to support us. Not that I would have had it any other way. Uh, honey, if you want to go back to school or, or work outside the house, I mean, that, that's fine with me. But, I mean, you don't have to do those things to, to prove your worth to me. I, I, I've always thought of you as a bright, capable person who... Uh, who I've considered an equal and, and someone I could count on. Really? Absolutely. That's sweet. Now, would you make us some gravy? There's a moral here, Dick. 
keep your mouth shut. That's it. You certainly look nice for your job interview. Thank you. I think it's important to make a good first impression. I think so, too. Then I'd get whatever that is off your tooth. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I wonder how long I've been walking around like this. Oh, probably since you left your house this morning. Mrs. Loudon? Oh, yes. Hey, Roy Herzog. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Well, you all set? I think so. OK, come on okay. in. Have a seat there and make yourself cut. Listen, you don't mind if I have lunch while we talk, do you? No, of course not. Go ahead. Well, I hate doing this in front of you, but it's been one of those days. Stuff's piling up. I'm short a person. The telephone's ringing. I have to interview people. I mean, I'm really swamped. Oh, darn it. What's the matter? Cheese. Jeez, I hate cheese. My wife knows I hate cheese. It seems like after you've been married for... Uh, I'm sorry, where was I? You were saying you're really swamped. Oh, yeah, well, you know how it is. Everybody wants to be a travel agent. I'm sure you have to be very selective. Yeah, well, we're a small office. We get a lot of repeat business. What in the hell is this? <laughs> Do you know what that is? Uh, well, I'm not sure, but it smells good. Yeah, well, then you take it. <laughs> so, where was I? You were saying it's a small office. You get a lot of repeat business. All right. You, you know, this is really, really a great business, and I'll tell you why. You're, you're fulfilling people's dreams, making them realize their fantasies by booking them to exotic lands and, and faraway places. What's the bus fare to Dayton? <laughs> it's in your files. Listen, could you give me a cup of coffee, a sandwich or something? Yeah, sure. Well, Mr. Herzog, the job certainly sounds exciting. It does? Yes. Well... Then can I be honest with you? By all means. You know, you, you've got a lot going for you. Oh, thank you. I mean, you're bright, you're pretty, your printing's real good. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you'd make one heck of a travel agent. Well, I'd certainly do my best. But I'm not going to give you the job. Why not? Well, you hadn't worked in several years. You don't need the money. <laughs> I'm afraid this is just a whim. A whim? Mr. Herzog, I would never come looking for a job on a whim. You wouldn't? No. I'm not some young girl fresh out of school trying to find herself. I'm a mature woman. And whether or not my husband is able to support me doesn't diminish my desire or, or capacity or right to work. Boy, that's a real good argument. <laughs> I bet you'd be terrific here. I bet you'd catch on fast. I bet you'd get to work every day on time. It's just that I know you're going to quit in two weeks. I'm not going to quit in two weeks. You're not? No. <laughs> Mr. Herzog, I've always been interested in travel, and I'm not just saying that because you were the only ad in the paper. Okay. Let me think. You're going to need a lot of training. It's taking a lot of supervision at first. It's going to take a lot of my time. So how soon could you quit and not make me crazy? Mr. Herzog, I'm not going to quit. You have my word. I don't know what else I can say to make you believe me. Okay, what the heck? You got the job. I do? You knew that. You knew that the minute you came in here. I didn't. Yes, you did. You charmer, you. Come on, let me introduce you to everybody. Oh, Mr. Herzog, I'm so thrilled. I don't know what to say. You're not thrilled. You knew. <laughs> Very frank, I want you to meet your new co-worker. She got the job? Come on, you knew I was going to hire her. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to get started. Well, neither can we. Now, that'll be your desk right here. Betty, I want you to set her up with everything. Get her uh, some of those business cards and a calendar and uh, what's that? Staple remover. Get her one of those. I want her desk all set up and ready for business first thing tomorrow morning. What if your husband gets sick? Then I quit. I knew that. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm here. Okay. It's a deal. Well, I'll see you tomorrow at 8. Uh, we don't start till 10. Then I'll take those two hours and memorize the globe. <laughs> Give me one of those. <laughs> All right, this game, I'm going to be the race car. I'm the top hat. Okay. What's the matter, George? I'm always the race car. <laughs> That's silly. Come on, let's get going. Well, if it's silly, let him be the car. 
Never. <laughs> I'm not going to play. But it's just you and me, Leslie. The way it should always be. I'm not playing unless you give George the race car. Why can't the man be an iron or a shoe? <laughs> because I'm always the race car. Look, why don't you both be something else? What's the big deal? All right, I'll be the top hat. No way. Look, okay, come on. <laughs> Look, I'll be the Scotty, okay? Let's just get on with the game. Hi, everybody. Okay, you got the dice. You go first. Right. Guess what? I got a job. Three. One, two, three. Bordock Avenue, 60 bucks. I'll buy it. Well, I've told you. Guess I'll tell Dick. Dick? Oh, sorry. I didn't know you were busy. Yeah. I have something to tell you, but it can wait. Great. Okay, that's enough waiting. What, what are you doing? Dick, you won't believe what I did this morning. I don't believe what you did just now. Dick, I've got a job. You're kidding. No. You are looking at a woman who from now on can take you to any city in the world anytime you want to go for practically nothing. You got a job as a pilot? No, Dick. I'm a travel agent. Great. Congratulations. You're surprised, aren't you? No. You're a little surprised. No. Well, no matter how surprised you are, apparently there are some people out there in the real world who don't think I'm such a hopeless homebody after all. Uh, Joanna, calling you a homebody was, was stupid. No, it wasn't. Well, it, it was thoughtless. It may have been the biggest favor you ever did for me. Okay, it was brilliant. <laughs> don't you see? If you hadn't called me a homebody, I'd never have taken this job. Now, thanks to you, I'm going to be working with interesting people, doing stimulating things, getting paid for it. I don't have to be here all the time, doing all those routine things, like bookkeeping, taking reservations, and talking with the guests, listening to the sound of you typing, knowing you're in the next room if I ever want to talk, taking long walks with you on the spur of the moment. And, you know, just generally doing all those things that I love to do. Oh, Dick. Oh, honey. I'm such a dope. No, you're not. Yes, I am for listening to you. <laughs> oh. I mean for listening to you and not listening to myself. Darn it. I like what I do here. I like taking care of this place and you and the guests. I like my life the way it is. Are you saying you, you like being a homebody? I hate that word. You're right. It's a disgusting word. Don't you understand? When you call me a homebody, it means you think I'm somebody who doesn't want to do anything. No, it doesn't. When, when I call you a homebody, it means somebody who does a lot. It's just that you do it at home. Somebody who doesn't do anything at home is called a, a sloth. <laughs> Welcome home. Nice to be back. Oh. Now, first thing in the morning, you call the travel agency and you tell them you change your mind. Oh, God. <laughs> now, now, what's the matter? Oh, you don't understand. I practically begged Mr. Herzog for that job. He didn't want to hire me because he said I'd quit in two weeks. Well, he's wrong. You're going to quit before you even start. <laughs> it's not funny, Dick. This is exactly what he said would happen. He even accused me of being there on a whim. Can you imagine that? I have to be careful how I answer this. Well, there's just one thing I can do. I'm going to have to hold my head up high, march into his office tomorrow morning, and make an utter fool of myself. Honey, I know you can do it. Dick, I feel funny about this. Maybe you should just wait in the car. Look, Joanna, this is as much my fault as it is yours. I, I think we should face it together. Okay. Good morning. 
Hi. 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 I'd like you all to meet my husband, Dick. Honey, this is Betty and Frank. Hi. Hi. Did you come down to watch the first day? Well, I came down to watch the beginning of it. Oh, Dick, look. Joanna, a name plaque is no reason to take a job you don't want. Morning. That's him. All right, remember, be strong, and, and I'll be right here. Okay. Oh, well, well. Hello, Mr. Herzog. I'd like you to meet my husband, Dick. Oh, hi. Hi. We're sure impressed with Joanna. We're looking forward to having her here. Well, I, I know she's looking forward to being here. <laughs> Mr. Herzog, could I speak to you privately for a moment? Oh, certainly. Uh, my office or yours? <laughs> Come on in. I have a seat. Tell you one thing, you sure do look pretty today. You're oh. quitting, aren't you? Oh, no. No, no. Then what did you want to talk to me about? Uh, well, the job and not taking it. You're quitting. I'm not quitting. I'm not starting. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Darn, 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 darn. Don't be upset. Rats. Big, stupid rats. I know how this must look. Rats. I really do appreciate you giving me this job. Yo, yo, thanks a lot for coming in. It's just that the things have changed since yesterday. God, I feel like such an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> Well, I can understand you're being angry, and I don't blame you. I, I just wish there was some way I could show you how sorry I am. How about hanging yourself? <laughs> Do you have cats? Uh, no. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you all right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got like that. That's okay. <laughs> it's... You made a mistake. You're human. We're all human. Thank you for being understanding. I just don't know what to do. Just, just say we'll be friends. Say it! Oh, we'll be friends. Now, get out. Ah, there you are. How, how'd it go? Let's just say it's over. What do you mean? I won't be taking the job after all. Oh, no, really? Oh, what a disappointment. You owe me ten bucks. Uh, let's go. Uh, I'm sorry the way I acted in there. That's okay. I really feel terrible about it. I just want you both to know if you ever want to take a trip any place at all, just give us a call. We'll set you up real nice. Well, that's really sweet. Thanks. If they call, send them someplace with bats. 